Hello, everyone. How are you? Good. Great. So today I am super excited for this installment of Ballet Vero Beach's Insights Programming because I have some of my most favorite people and some of the people I admire most that we get to work with here to talk about our brand new fellowship initiative for dancers. I am Adam Schnell. I am the Artistic Director and CEO of Ballet Vero Beach. And I'm hoping that this conversation today lets you all know a little bit more about this exciting new initiative that we are starting and also about some of our partners uh, who have decided to take this journey with us. And I'm smiling because it's been a long time coming and I'm really excited. So I wanna make sure we introduce everyone first, talk about the respective organizations and then talk about this really exciting fellowship initiative. So Alex, let's start with you. Okay, thank you, Adam, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. My name is Alex Cantor. I'm the Director of Theater and Dance at Indian River State College. Uh, in, we, we have campuses in uh, five different counties down here in the Treasure Coast. Uh, our main campus is in Fort Pierce, but we also have the Mueller campus up in Vero Beach. And so we're very excited in the Performing and Visual Arts Department to be partnering with Ballet Vero Beach and the Learning Alliance to create this really great opportunity for students from Florida and beyond to come to our community to engage in the performing arts and specifically dance in this case, to get their AAs at Indian River State College and to get incredible teaching experience thanks to the, to the Learning Alliance, and then hopefully become part of our community engagement with the arts. Debbie and Liz, I think we can get home. I think Alex pretty much summarized it for all of us. So yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure Alex gets a salary increase. Uh, but <laughs> since he started us off like that, uh, Debbie, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Debbie R. Snow. I work with the Learning Alliance, a nonprofit focused on early literacy and reading by third grade in Vero Beach, Florida. Um, and I'm our extended learning programs manager. And I come to the work with a background in arts integration and as a professional theater director. So supporting teachers to teach kids to learn to read using the arts. Liz, what about you? So I am one of the co-founders of the Learning Alliance and I'm the director of professional development. We started about 10 years ago and we were pretty much literally two crazy moms and a philanthropist that were sitting around my, my kitchen table, um, really struggling to understand why, well, one, why our kids were, were struggling to read and not engaged in school and not getting the answers that we needed. Uh, but also when we traveled the country, we realized early literacy was such a point of transformation, not only for individual success, but community prosperity. And third grade reading is, is really a, a pivot point. So up until third grade, you um, learn to read. And after that, you read to learn. So nationally, statistically, you know, we have um, very, like only 40% of our third graders are proficient at reading. So, you know, when we really educated ourselves and learned that um, you know, they build prisons based on third grade reading scores. And we had a national, Ray Oglethorpe, the chairman of our board calls this our little known national shame. He said, we have to, we have to solve this. Um, and, you know, what's great about you, Adam, is when you came to our Moonshot Community Action Network, which is a group of, of outside um, community partners that understand the urgency and the need to that you know schools can't do it alone the learning alliance can't do it alone it takes everybody getting out of the the bleachers and onto the playing field like ralph smith says from campaign for grade level reading i remember you arrived and you said i don't know why i'm here i don't know how ballet helps early literacy but i'm going to keep showing up until we can figure it out and i think this is just such a beautiful example of just keep showing up and figuring out how all these beautiful, you know, organizations and, and, you know, moving parts and pieces can come together for our youngest citizens. So, you know, it's funny that you say that. So I know that we have potential parents of um, potential fellows that may be applying to this program. We have potential students watching this video. Uh, hopefully we have some additional funders watching this video and we have people in the community that are just like, uh, okay, so you've got the local state college, you've got the local ballet company, and then you've got this national literacy service organization. Like, what? Why are why are they trying to recruit uh, graduating seniors? Like, what's happening here? And I think that 
what's really interesting about what Liz said is like this sort of keep showing up philosophy. I started my professional career uh, in the first ballet company I ever worked for making $25 a week as an apprentice, which is basically unpaid. Like, let's be honest, that's unpaid. Uh, I used to get really excited when we went out on tour because my per diem was $35 a day. So if we went out on tour for a week, then I was like, I was like, oh my God, I can buy all my friends dinner. Like, seriously. Uh, that was when I was 18. It's actually gotten worse in the dance industry in that uh, starting jobs for young dancers have dried up in a way. Most companies have a traineeship ship program, which you don't get paid, which leads into an apprenticeship program, which you don't get paid. And hopefully you have, you, you get into a spot in the company, but there may be 20 people buying for one spot. So I knew in starting Ballet Vero Beach, and we are going into our 10th season next year, uh, that we couldn't do everything just based on the industry standard. And one of those things is I knew I wanted to offer an opportunity for young people, some sort of apprenticeship, traineeship that was more than just, oh, hey, we're not gonna pay you for a few years until you age out of the program and then see you and we hope we, you can go do something else. That's just not, the work is too hard. You all know within your or own organizations, the work is too hard to be that sort of self-centered and that narrow-mindedly focused. Um, so as we have grown and we have gotten to this point, uh, my mom actually was an adjunct professor at Indian River State College for years and years and years and years. And she still works in the student support lab in the Vero Beach campus. And I started to think about, gosh, the price of higher education at this place is so low and the quality is really, really high. What if we were offering some sort of joint degree program with the college? So that's when we sort of started getting Alex and people at IRSC involved. And as our partnership, Liz and Debbie, uh, Ballet Bureau Beach and the Learning Alliance has grown, I started to realize that we had the opportunity to not just give uh, potential fellows in this program, uh, a high quality degree, professional stage experience. We really had the opportunity through our work with you guys to open up their minds in a way to the fact that the arts can really be used as these tools to um, influence the next generation in a way that I always knew was possible, but it's, it comes back to what Liz said about me showing up a meeting going, I don't know why I'm here, but I'm gonna keep showing up because I believe there's something I can do so that's sort of where this whole program of the three of, our, the three of our organizations working together and building something where, yes, you get an AA degree through IRSC. Yes, you get professional stage experience with BVB, but over the two year program, you're also gonna get professional development with Liz and Debbie and folks at the Learning Alliance and training in the latest arts integration and arts literacy and science of teaching techniques and also act as a conduit for the delivery of the education programs that BVB and TLA have worked out. And it's really, to me, I've never seen, and it's free, we're paying the tuition. <laughs> I've never seen that sort of come together before. Debbie, I know you and Alex both have theater backgrounds. How does this sit with you in terms of an opportunity and you know other things out there that you may have seen before? Yeah, I think, you know, the thread that I hear in, in sort of all of these conversations and all of our conversations is this, this collaborative, um, co-created visioning, right? This idea that um, we don't, none of us, the world doesn't exist in silos, right? We don't learn in silos. We don't. So the idea that arts and literacy work together through, you know, what we call this arts integration lens makes total sense more often than not from the creative side, it makes less sense from the education side because education is often sort of structured. And, you know, like you said, you, you do this kind of thing, you do get this degree, you do this kind of thing, you get that degree. And we're really interested in kind of leaning into and what I found to be extraordinarily valuable for me is there are all kinds of points of intersection. There are natural overlaps. And so the, the work of the training is really to call those out and to give access to strategies and ways to really bring forth the tools of the arts in supportive literacy and to develop the literacy skills in creative and dynamic ways, right? Active and inter interactive, we always say. So right. the, the, the two become fundamentally mutually reinforcing. Um, and that's not always the way that um, the current structures and systems 
introduce the idea of teaching in the classroom or introduce the idea of learning to read or introduce the idea of becoming a professional creative performer. And so I moved through my own personal journey of, you know, I was doing theater, mostly directing, stage managing, organizing. So I got that sort of brain going on, but also what I was, I was teaching because to your point about, you know, you don't want to get, I get paid $900 for three to four months of commitment was like a golden <laughs> ticket. But I was working every single, you know, work until six o'clock and barely eating on the way to rehearsal every night and just living that I can't, I have rehearsal life. Um, so when I start, well, I was paid, getting paid to teach. I was getting paid to teach after school classes. And, and, and I started to notice a real shift in what my students were able to accomplish same age group, same developmental stages, but from year to year, they were having a hard time collaboratively planning independently. They were having a harder and harder time with scripts that I was putting in front of them. And what those two things are not disconnected. And I got really curious about that. And I really started talking to their teachers and started learning more about what they were doing and not doing in the classroom and found that what I was doing with them in the theater context and the performance aspect that freedom to create and collaborate was not necessarily there. So I shifted in, in, in the daytime. So I shifted into sort of this um, bridge building, you know, thinking about what's happening here, what's happening there, and how do those things talk to each other? And through that, I found my way um, to professional development and professional learning with educators. Just really, I see my job as giving them access to the insight, to these tools, and then we can continue to build them together. And so that brought me to the Learning Alliance where the focus is literacy and all these light bulbs just keep going on. Yeah, this makes sense. This makes sense once we roll up our sleeves and get into the work. So I have a specific question for Alex, but before I get to him, um, Liz, I'm wondering if you can comment on, for me, the, the sort of light bulb moment, um, <laughs> I joke with my youngest students that I'm like grew from Despicable Me, so I would, I'm always going light bulb. But um, my light bulb moment was really, and that's a real personality thing. If you apply to this program, you're going to be dealing with grew a lot. So just you know, get that out there. I'm teasing. Um, the light bulb moment was really in the fact that how in the past couple of years, really amping up BVB's partnership with TLA and being in the studio with you and Debbie so much is that really you guys aren't looking for a one fifth, one person fits all approach to getting kids academically successful, getting kids social, emotionally successful, all that sort of stuff. So for me, and this is gonna dovetail on what I wanna talk to Alex about is the fact that this program, the fellowship program is a little bit of a choose your own adventure, a little bit of like, yes, we know you're gonna end up on stage with BBB. We know you're gonna do uh, academics and also hopefully arts with Alex at IRSC. We know you're gonna get the training from TLA to be able to go into classrooms and really inspire kids and educators. But what in your experience and what in the founding of TLA really led you away from, okay, so this is the only way to do it. And it really is about looking every single kid in the face and getting inside their head and seeing what needs to be done. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> big question. Um, I'm glad we pushed this to a little later this morning. <laughs> it would have been bad really, really early this morning. <laughs> Uh, a couple things from personal experience as somebody who is very dyslexic and I had kids that were dyslexic were um, just different. I, you know, it's not a one size fits all when you're dyslexic and you, um, you require and you, you, your fate is dependent on people that appreciate and understand the, the, the difference and, and figure out, you know, how, how can I reach you and how can I teach you in ways that are, are really meaningful and valuable. So that's the lens through which I come to this personally. And then my background training was working in schools with kids that had language and, and learning issues. So you had to think outside of the box. It was not traditional. Um, and I think what we're seeing, particularly with these low scores nationally, that we are not meeting kids where they are. We're not meeting teachers where they need to be um, and training them and how best to to reach and teach the kids in their charge. And I always say that I think teaching reading or teaching anything is a science taught by an artist. A lot of times we give teachers, you know, a box curriculum and say, here, go forth and do this. And I can check my box to say that you've done your job well if you can deliver this curriculum, but it's in the absence of understanding 
um, why maybe a curriculum or, or an experience is developed in a certain way. So we have a lot of science, a lot of cognitive neuroscience that can inform the work. And I think we don't offer that information to teachers um, in meaningful, digestible ways so they can really make decisions about you know, well, how can I maximize this learning experience? What does active engagement mean and why is it important to learning and memory? Um, so, uh, and then, you know, the, so the arts naturally fit into that space because it is about, you know, uh, about allowing for, you know, multiple and different ways in which to take in information, but multiple and diverse ways in which to, to demonstrate knowledge and learning. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question, but it absolutely did. And I think that, you know, it's easy, it's easy for me to explain to folks that are interested in this fellowship initiative, like, yes, you will be a professional member of Ballet Vero Beach, you will take class, you will appear on stage, you will get this training from, you know, the Learning Alliance and uh, be the conduit to deliver our in school education programs along with our dancers and along with Debbie. And then it brings us back to Alex because you are an artist that ended up in higher education, Alex. And I know in the dance world, there's always a struggle between like, okay, do you try and get into a company right out of high school or do you go for that conservatory degree? And a lot of the conversations that you and I have had have actually been, can we break that mold? Can we do both? Can we, through the quality of our organizations, allow kids to dip their toes in higher education, to dip their toes in the professional world? So I'm curious if you can speak to that a little bit and just sort of give us a little bit of the IRSC perspective, because what I think pe even people around here don't know how amazing IRSC is and how, like, how many programs they have and how big the campuses are. And, and I felt, I feel a little bit like we have this sleeping giant and I'm really excited to sort of bring it to the community in a different way. So I'm hoping that you can talk about that a bit. Yeah, I'm happy to and and yay for per diems. I remember <laughs> feasts when we were on tour. Um, Ridiculous. You know, one of the one of the biggest things we just had our, our uh, fall semester commencement at IRSC and uh, our, our new president, um, Tim Moore is so big about the student experience and and what we're what our students are bringing to IRSC in terms of their varied life experiences and what they're getting out of it. We um, it's about a thirty five thousand person school uh, and that includes online programs as well. Um, teaching everything we have, yes, we have AAs that you can get in theater and music as well as you can get your uh, dental hygienist and um, HVAC certifications. Right, so we we teach all sorts. Uh, again, we're we're serving our community in that way. But one of the biggest things that both Dr. Moore and I are focused on is lowering the barriers, right? We have, um, and, and Liz and Debbie, you, you deal with this in terms of literacy for, for our young students all over the place, but there are so many barriers placed in our young learners' ways in terms of achieving success. And Adam, as you were describing professional artistry and sort of what it takes to intern, then apprentice, and then whatever, if you don't have a um, trust fund supporting you, that is a very prohibitive, cost prohibitive process. And what we have seen, and of course the world is now reacting to this, is that only a select few people are sort of given the tools necessary to succeed in that environment. So what's really beautiful about this program and the, the generosity and or accessibility of this fellowship um, is, you're literally lowering those barriers for dancers, right? We are saying, we are going to provide you this opportunity as well as get you an education, an, a, an AA degree to get you started on your way um, and begin building you as a 21st century artist. That's, that's a big thing about, and Debbie, I was so glad you mentioned silos because if anyone thinks they're going to um, get on stage and just turn pirouettes for the rest of their life, or in my case, you know, recite Shakespeare, sadly you're mistaken. That's not the way that the arts works anymore. And um, the notion that you get to then go into the community and um, working with, working with uh, six-year-olds and teaching them how to read, it's life-changing. I don't even like little children and it's life-changing, right? <laughs> um, it's, it's a beautiful experience. And, and again, that's something that every artist needs to know how to activate their arts in the community, how to become engaged, how to show up 
at that meeting. So, so everything you're talking about is definitely part of our programs. And, and same thing with the one size fits all and, and meeting people where they are. Um, within our performing and visual arts department, you are allowed to major in anything you want at IRSC. I've got biology majors that are still doing my shows. Um, I've got dancers that are marketing majors and learning how to run their own business uh, or getting a BA, a bachelor's degree um, in education, in early education. And uh, they're still twirling and, and jumping each night on stage. So it's very important that we're creating well-rounded artists that are engaged in the community that haven't had to sacrifice mortgage and foreclose on three properties just to be able to be there. Um, we're breaking down barriers. And I think that's that's huge as we go forward. And I think that uh, it's funny that you, you put it that way. And even with my generation, um, I was very lucky that I had supportive parents that you know had the financial means to support me. But also the thing that really turned it for my dad was I had a full scholarship to a four-year university and I had an apprenticeship with a ballet company, that same one that was paying $25 a week. And I sat him down and I said, okay, dad, let's say I didn't have the scholarship. If you were going to pay for a four-year undergrad for me, you could literally pay my apartment and a car and groceries for me for maybe eight to 10 years of being a professional dancer and still come out ahead. And he was looking at my older brother who was already in college and my younger sister who was about to go to college. And he said, all right, let's see where this dance thing <laughs> leads you. Because honestly, he said, I just want you to promise me that if you have the desire to get a degree later, you will. And I did, I went, I did my bachelor's, I did you know, my master's, but I think that having an adult in my life that was willing to see that this was a good path was pivotal. So we're really hoping that with this program, once we have broken down the barriers of cost, that we're really just opening accepted fellows' minds, accepted fellows' <laughs> minds to the possibilities. It would be amazing if after two years, folks decided to go on to a BA in education uh, at IRSC, and then we're immediately teaching in the Indian River County or the St. Lucie County School District, and we're already versed in the methods of the Learning Alliance, and we're right there in with science of teaching. That'd be phenomenal. But if at some point you decide you want to major in business and start a nonprofit that is also doing good work in the world, we are trying to just make that happen for everyone in a way that allows young dancers to continue to pursue their passion for dance get some academic backing and really look at what the future of education in this country could be like. And I'm, again, I started out this whole thing by saying I'm, I'm really excited about this because it's not checking boxes. We started off going, okay, let's do a different apprenticeship or trainee program. And with all of you guys involved, it's really blossomed into something that I think could have, you know, national applications for the way that we train young artists, for the way that we train young educators. I think, you know, I, I, I really just want to pick up on something Alex was just saying too, that I think is really important and inspirational that, you know, you are, you have students who are coming, not seeing that they can only, they have to only do the business degree. They can also be on stage with you and that these are not mutually exclusive ideas. And the idea that young people coming into this, young learners coming into this program would then become role models of that for the young young people <laughs> that they're working with and you know the early learning space i think that's really huge like how do you you know how do you shift the future of an entire system with such entrenched ideology about how we do what we do well it has to start somewhere right and so really that idea of breaking down the barriers and of of what it means to be a young learner whether that is a 6 year old young learner or a 17 year old you know just getting going figuring out i think that's just such an important aspect of this that has yet we, we have yet to engage in it to sort of see how that plays itself out but I think it also really speaks to this bigger picture idea of it's always a both and conversation right and that the the nature of organizations like ours coming together to have these conversations you started off by saying how is this going to make sense you know how does this really make sense it makes sense to us because we're in it but it also makes sense because if if you're looking at these big entrenched problems like early literacy and reading by third grade and the fact that our numbers just have not moved at the national and level and teacher retention percentage points in 40 years you know yeah. we're looking at really big picture um, entrenched challenges they're going to require 
new solutions, right? Do the same thing over and over again, you're gonna get the same, same results. So we're really at that idea of collective action and collective impact that it takes. When we start to see the pie is not finite and I take mine so you don't get yours, but we're actually coming together to find new ways of using the existing resources we have within the community. I think that's why it made sense when you walked into MCAN and you were like, I don't know why I'm here and we need to grow from there. But I think that's why this continues. This actually makes perfect sense to me because we're starting to look at how do we shift the paradigm of what it looks like to be an educator, to be a learner um, and that the students are, um, you know, whether there are K three babies or there are um, AA students that the learning continues and, and it's always a, continuing. And as a parallel point, being also to inspire the educators that are in the trenches today, getting these fantastic fellowship okay. students, this training, because when we started in our journey of arts, literacy and arts integration and sort of, I won't say sneaking the science of teaching in there, but like embedding it in a way that's fun because we're all dancing around, uh, with you guys, one of the things that Liz and Debbie and I talk about all the time is we have to get the teachers motivated as well because they're the ones that are there every day looking at those text scores and what am I gonna do? So it really does become that full circle, full cycle, you know, kind of holistic approach. Um, it's exciting. And Debbie, speak, speaking of holistic approaches, I'm so glad that you shared, I'm glad that you shared your um, story about to, you know, working by day, I got to go to rehearsal, teaching. I, I should stress that this is not going to be an easy fellowship, right? This is, and 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 I, I don't say that in a negative, I don't say that in a negative way. I actually think of it as a really great opportunity to immerse yourself. And I'm, I'm right now I'm, I'm looking at the camera and I'm talking to fellowship applicants and maybe their parents, but this is a chance on someone else's dime to immerse yourself in what you're passionate about, to immerse yourself in doing, in experiencing, and in changing, in activating change uh, through the Learning Alliance. But um, you're gonna be busy and you're gonna be working and um, you do have to maintain some grades at, in your classes at IRC. Now, if you're lucky, you'll take some fun classes with me, but um, you, there's, there's an educational component to that also, but don't forget, you're also professional performers with Adam. So, um, this is not a walk in the park, but more importantly, this, the, that kind of experience, that kind of work till you drop at night is the best possible training. I cannot think of any better training for what it's like to be a successful artist in the world today. Um, I have, sadly, I have many students in my life have come through and can sing their faces off, can dance, you know, turn a triple at, at nobody's business and kick their face. And um, they are not prepared for the amount of work that it takes to show up. And, and, and I, I use that term in quotes, the showing up. We were talking about a meeting, but in the arts, you have to show up. And I think that's really what we're going to do here is we're going to be building um, your, your strength as an artist, your resilience as an artist to be able to do this, to be able to switch gears constantly, to go from a classroom to a stage to a little children classroom and, and to engage in the community, maybe attend a meeting. Oh my gosh, crazy, right? Um, that's, that's an experience I wish I had as a 19 year old or a 20 year old, um, which I know was only, you know, two years ago, but um, the, that, that's important. And I think again, that you'll learn more from that experience than you will from any textbook. Um, or even any one performance is just how to sort of keep breathing and um, make it a wholesome and organic experience that uh, you will cherish and, and rely upon for the rest of your life. And I think that also those skills, if you decide, you know what, I don't want to be in a ballet <laughs> company, those skills and that rigor, both academically and artistically and problem solving, they're going to carry the graduates of this program with them into whatever they choose to accomplish. You know, I was a professional dancer and now I run a ballet company. And I was joking before we started this, this Zoom that there is no off. There's no time off because with email and with, you know, the things ringing to my cell phone, I wish there was, but there isn't. So I think that the great thing about a program intense, rigorous, however you want to call it, 
is that it really is prepping you to go, oh, hey, my real world job is not <laughs> that tough because I did all of this stuff. Um, and again, it just, it's, it's something that I hope will just open folks' minds to different possibilities. And I hope that in turn, applicants open our minds to what is possible. Like we always, Debbie and I come up with these crazy ideas and we think we know exactly what it's going to look like, but within five minutes of letting it out of the box, it like, it's absolutely different. And we look at each other, we go better. Like, I mean, it, it is, it's just, that's the nature of something new like this. And I'm sure that there will be a ton of questions, both on the application process and on the nitty gritty of the program. Um, we really hope that this chat has uh, enlightened parents and students and anyone else in the community that wants to know what this whole fellowship initiative for dancers is. Um, you know, please get in touch. Does anybody have anything that they want to add before I stop the recording and we can wish each other well for the rest of the holiday season? Well, let me just piggyback on what everyone has said. I think as a, as a beginning program, it's really an opportunity for people that want to be on the ground floor with something really innovative that it, we don't know what it's going to look like in the end. We have some ideas, but if you are the, the, of the mindset that you want to do something that's really, um, you know, a new initiative, a new collaborative uh, experience and, and help build that really um, and be a part of that, that learning family. Um, I, I have two left feet and Adam, you've talked me into, into figuring out how to do this. So can you help me in some way? Very, very persuasive. Yeah, all we really know is that at the end of the two year program, you're gonna have an AA in something from IRSC. <laughs> you will have performed for two years with BVB. You'll have all this training with the Learning Alliance and you will have been in classrooms uh, delivering our educational components, but we're really, we're looking to be inspired by the incoming fellows as much as you know we're inspired to launch this and tool right. the program to the needs. Like we were saying, it's not a one size fits all thing. Right. It's a, we think that you have the appropriate work ethic and technique level and just energy to survive in something like this. And we wanna work with you to be the best that you can be. And the good news is you get for, again, at the beginning of this program with four, four fellows, you get the personalized attention of the Absolutely. folks on this call. So it, you get you get sculpted, tailored models for, hey, we think this is a great course for you to take. We think this performance or this classroom would be a good one for you to go into. We're not just throwing you into the wild. Absolutely. Um, and that mentorship, I think, is really important as well. Absolutely. So if you like us, apply. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but really. Uh, I think I'm going to stop making jokes. This is me. <laughs> this, is, this is real. I can't be any other way. Um, and thanks everybody for tuning in. I'm going to end the recording um, and then the four of us will chat a little bit more, but uh, get in touch with any questions you might have. And we are really looking forward to seeing a healthy applicant pool and we cannot wait to get started with you all. Happy New Year.